do we find the answers to life after death? And what do we do with the answers when we actually find them? Real paranormal television. With your host, Grayson Schmidt. I've been an investigator and researcher of the paranormal for over 25 years, and I've been able to investigate some amazing places. Hey brother, what do you think of this place? You know it. That's how we roll. We seek out the answers and get behind the scenes of real paranormal investigations. From orbs to Ouija boards, we'll be discussing the hot topics of the paranormal world. To try to find out the truth. To explore why we are here. And where do we go when we die? Is this all, or do we move on to something else? Just what exactly lies beyond? This thin veil of life. Hi, I'm your host, Grayson Schmidt, for Real Paranormal Television. I've had the good fortune to investigate some amazing places, and I'm going to bring some of that experience and real-world knowledge to you. In my day job, I'm an electrician. And I work with energy and concepts of physics all day long. But my true passion is discovering and exploring the paranormal. I hope you enjoy our adventure together and thank you so much for watching Real Paranormal Television. As a paranormal investigator, I spend a lot of time on the road. I have a lot of time to think about what it is to be a paranormal investigator. What does it really mean? What are we searching for? Why are we wasting our time running around in the dark trying to see if ghosts can talk to us? It's pretty crazy. But you know what? What if there's more to this life than meets the eye? What if there's something else going on? What if there is life after death? That's a pretty cool concept, and that's something I want to find out the answers to. Investigation locations are just like people. They each have their own personality their own characteristics, their own history, and it's amazing what you find in these locations. Sometimes the place is completely dangerous, other times absolutely beautiful. And it just depends on what's going on at the location can really determine whether or not the location has any paranormal activity associated with it whatsoever. Places can be haunted even when you had no idea that they had any haunted history. It just takes something to have happened there that might have been tragic, that might have been unbelievable or unforeseen. And what happens is sometimes that energy sticks to the place just like the wallpaper. After a while, and as time goes on, sometimes that wallpaper starts peeling off the walls. The place becomes undone. And that serene, beautiful setting just turns into a complete tragedy. You have to be there to witness what's going on, to try to capture the essence of the location, to really dig deep and find out what the hidden history is, what the hidden meaning is. Is there paranormal activity taking place? Or are we just looking into the depths of history? You just never know. And we have the privilege of going into these locations to find out together what the real answers are. But no one expects to find the paranormal here, right next door to you. And I've been very fortunate to uh, have investigated some really incredible places. And uh, what I found over, uh, over the years is that a lot of the places that we do go to investigate, there's nothing going on. Uh, people have legitimate claims, activity taking place or what they think is an activity taking nothing away from their experience, but also we're there to find the truth. We're not there to suppose, we're not there to assume that something's taking place. We're there to find the answers and get to the bottom of the truth. The truth sometimes just isn't the answers that they're looking for. A lot of people, uh, you know, experience 
phenomenon such as uh, a presence, they feel a presence, uh, they have uh, unexplained noises, you know, things that, that you know, are, are scary. They can be very scary, especially if it's unknown, if it's something that's out of the realm of normal, which is what we deal with, the paranormal, which is above or outside of what is normal. But again, our job isn't there to judge, our job isn't there to assume that a place is haunted or not haunted. My trick is, I let the place reveal itself. I don't uh, go in assuming anything. I don't go in looking for anything specific. I listen to the claims of activity, but again, I'm there to find out what's really going on and not just what's being told to me. But nine out of ten times, they're dealing with something that uh, is just a normal motor that's not grounded properly. Uh, it's a high tension line outside their window, uh, but it can really cause a sense of dread and a real sense of unease. And as a researcher and investigator, part of my job is to set their mind at ease, to help them cope with what's going on in their environment, to sleuth out what's going on in their environment, and to come up with some kind of real world solution. But it's not always something they want to hear. And I've had several experiences like that. I've been on uh, several investigations where we've come up with some real-world answers for the phenomenon that's being experienced at the location. Unfortunately, the people at the location don't want to hear that evidence, but it's truth. And unfortunately, some people want to hold on to their idea of what's happening more than they want to understand the reality of what's happening. Now, I'm not there to blow smoke up somebody's butt. I'm there to find the answers to what's going on. I'm not going to tell them, oh, everything's going to be okay if it's not. If it's not okay and there's something we can do about it, then we're going to do it. But if there's nothing we can do about it, that's something that, uh, you know, really takes a lot of cooperation from the people that you're going to work with as potential clients. I've had a few instances where the client that we've gone to do the investigation for really isn't very happy with what we've come up with. Unfortunately, it's going to be the truth, whether they like it or not. Part of the problem is, is that sometimes people get their head wrapped so hard around an idea of something that's taking place, but it's not taking place. There's a real world solution for what they're experiencing, and that's what we're there to do. background on me and uh, tell you how I got involved in the paranormal and what sparked my interests. Uh, the first time I've ever had an experience with the paranormal was when I was six years old. Uh, we were living in a house in Freehold, New Jersey, and uh, I really never had anything happen to me before this, um, but this experience that I had really set things apart from everything else and began my mind working on the concept that there's another side, that ghosts exist. I was going to sleep one night, and uh, from my bedroom doorway, uh, my mother was calling my name. Well, I acted like I was asleep, because I thought I was in trouble for being up playing. What had happened was, she called my name three times total. The third time, I was concerned, and I went out to the hallway to see what was going on. Well, when I went out to the hallway to see what was going on, nobody was there. I checked all the rooms on the floor, and nobody was on that floor at all but me. I heard uh, the water running down in the kitchen, so I yelled down to my mom, Hey, Mom! She said, Yeah. So I went downstairs to, uh, to see what was going on. So I asked her, You know, what? What do you want? She goes, What do you mean? And I said, Well, you were calling me. She said, uh, I wasn't calling you. And uh, I'll tell you what, a rush of fear and uh, I can't even explain the experience. Um, tears came to my eyes, I began to cry, I was extremely upset because I heard my mother's voice calling me and it was clear as day and totally distinguishable as her voice. So my mother sat me down and explained that they bought the house from a very nice man whose wife died there in the house and that was probably her spirit. That scared the crap out of me. I have to say, I've never experienced fear like that before in my life. Tears started rolling down my face, and I just couldn't wrap my head around what had just happened. 
ghosts were real. To me, as a kid, six years old, it, it was incomprehensible. Um, I saw Casper the Friendly Ghost on TV, things like that. I, I really had no idea that there could be a voice that was so familiar to me that knew my name. That was the amazing thing. It called me by my name. And it said it three times. So, you know, there it goes. I mean, uh, needless to say, that just scared the crap out of me, the whole experience. Her sitting me down, though, and explaining it to me in a way that I could understand, she made it okay. Somehow, even though I was frightened, it opened the door for an open line of communication with someone that I trusted that I could talk about these experiences with and learn more about it. So that was a pretty incredible start for me and I was very lucky to have that avenue and that comfort zone in order to be able to discuss my experiences with somebody. So for that, you know, that was uh, definitely my first experience into the paranormal and uh, one of the reasons that I kind of got on the path that I did to eventually become a paranormal investigator. I'm going to take you on an adventure with me. I'm going to bring you to Roosevelt Island. I want you to experience what I experienced. It was an incredible, incredible thing. When we went to explore these buildings for the first time, I was blown away by my experience. I really had no idea what was going to happen to me in the future, and I had no idea that this was going to become a two and a half year long investigation of a haunting on Roosevelt Island. It started out with our adventure there just to explore the buildings, we basically got into the island hospital eventually and worked our way around the building. But upon going through the building, I began to feel a tugging and a sensation that brought me through the building, almost like something was guiding me. It didn't happen at first. It eventually happened. And in that building, it was like you were in a room full of people, but it was only you and your friend there. And I know some of you have experienced this before, so you can understand what that feeling is really like. For those of you who've never really experienced the paranormal before, I really recommend that you take it one step at a time. There's no rush. You have your whole life ahead of you to explore the possibilities of hauntings, of interaction with spirits, but I'm going to give you something from my perspective and how I got started. So I really wasn't sure what was happening. I was having these visions of these locations over and over and over in my dreams for the next couple days after we left the first time because they were specific. I wanted to find out if there was some kind of hidden meeting, if there was some kind of uh, connection that I had to the place from a past life. I had no idea. I just wasn't sure what that connection was, but I wanted to capture it on film so I could look at it, so I could experience it with my own eyes, as opposed to in my dreams and my memories. I went back and I used this camera. This is a Kodak disc camera, and it takes a circular negative basically a standard point-and-shoot camera, uh, 35 millimeter, pretty incredible, and I use this for my work. So we went back and we captured some images. Now I had a problem with this camera. I went to go take a picture down one of the hallways and the camera overloaded as if it was going to explode. I shut the camera off. Basically you can turn it on by opening the shutter, you can turn it off by closing the shutter. It's very simple. Um, so I shut the camera off and I looked at my friend and we were like, what's going on here? Uh, I went to go take the shot again down a hallway. It overloaded again. The camera, I'm looking at the camera, it flashed off a picture of my face. I pointed it towards the ground, it flashed off a picture of the floor. And we both looked at each other like, this is crazy. What's going on? I went to go try one more time. I said, let's try this one more time. If we don't get the image, we'll get out. So I went to go try it. It overloaded again, so we left. I still have the camera to this day. I want you guys to understand and see what I did, how I did it, and how we went about exploring and researching the paranormal. Everybody has to start somewhere, and this is how we got started. We basically learned every time we went through trial and error. We're, we weren't paranormal investigators. We were just regular kids enjoying life, exploring and adventuring, but just through happenstance, captured the images of what I would consider to be spirits. 
Please sit back and enjoy. I want to show you some of my experience. The first clip is called The Dream, and these are the images that I saw over and over in my dream. The second clip is called The Reality, and it's basically what we actually captured with this camera and with other cameras over the two and a half years that we investigated the charity hospital on Roosevelt Island. The Ruins Roosevelt Island, New York City, the ruins of the Island Hospital, also known as City Hospital, also known as Charity Hospital. Roosevelt Island lies in between Manhattan Island and Long Island City. The Island Hospital is the larger ruin building in this picture, and just below it is the smallpox hospital whose ruins are preserved and still stand to this day. Roosevelt Island is a short trip by tram from Manhattan, which runs adjacent to the Queensboro Bridge, you could see the ruins through the bridge's structure as you traverse the East River, which passes below. The Queensboro Bridge, or 59th Street Bridge as it's better known, looms as a monument to one of the city's lifelines. But once on the island, a feeling of disconnect sets in, and a short walk south brought you to the ruins of the once great island hospital. After my first visit to the ruins, I had dreams of specific locations in and around the building, as if it were a slideshow. These images played over and over in my mind, and I wondered, what did it mean? Was I connected to this building in some way? Perhaps I died there in a previous life. I just had to find some of the answers. I really wasn't sure what this meant, and I knew it was significant. So I went back and I took several photos over and over of the places that I was dreaming about just to try to put together what was going on in my mind, just to find some kind of reason for why I had such a strong connection to this place. Just didn't make sense to me at first. I went through this building over and over and had some pretty strange things take place. As I was walking through taking pictures of the building, I started feeling a tugging in my stomach, a sensation I really wasn't very familiar with. It was pretty amazing but it felt like I was being brought through the building to the different places so that I could be shown and reminded specifically of the areas that were haunting me. Needless to say, I had no idea what was to follow. The reality. When I had the film developed, this was the first picture on the first roll of film. I was blown away. I couldn't believe what I was looking at in this picture. To me it looks like a little girl crying out in front of the staircase. You can clearly make out her eye sockets, her nose, her mouth, and her hairline. But her body was wisping away into some other shape. The image in the negative was perfectly clear. So I took it to a different film processor to have it redeveloped just to take a better look. They came back and developed with even more contrast and more detail. I was just simply stunned by what I was looking at. I thought for the first time I probably captured the image of a spirit. Something happened later that day during the investigation. I was attempting to take a shot down this hallway and the camera overloaded. It sounded like the thing was going to explode. I'd never experienced anything like this with this camera before. The picture you're looking at is actually from a later investigation with pure sunlight pouring in from behind me. The red in the image, I can't explain, but I'll chalk that up to bad film. I went back a few weeks later with a new camera and I got it. I got the thing that stopped my first camera. I couldn't believe it. This was incredible to me. You couldn't see the thing, but you could sure feel it. I took a series of two pictures, one right after the other, down this hallway, and it felt like an energy movement when I looked at the developed pictures, you could see that this thing was actually trying to avoid the flash on my camera, or at least that's what I thought. I had the good fortune to investigate this location for over two and a half years. We captured image upon image of things that just couldn't be explained, and it wasn't in every picture either. We really started to apply the science of lighting and just learn so much from this investigation as what to do and what not to do. And that's really what matters. You have to cut your teeth and begin somewhere. 
And this was my beginning into investigations. This next group of pictures are pretty incredible. We nailed it. Applying the science of lighting, we were able to figure out what was going on and what we started to capture. The pictures were taken after dark and what was happening was is that after dark we were bleaching out anything in the picture with the flash. So I worked in stage lighting at the time and I used a piece of lighting gel, magenta, to cover the flash of the camera in order to reduce the foot candles so that maybe we'd stop bleaching out something that we felt was there. And I got an incredible picture. In this picture you can clearly see to the lower left hand corner the reflection of the tile from the bathroom under the stairs. But there's some other things in this image that appear also to be reflections. So to my amazement I wonder is light reflecting off of the energy of these spirits? Is that how we captured these images? The other times that I captured anything on film, there was ambient light, which means that the light from outside was still filtering into the building, so it created a light balance with the flash. Perhaps that's how we were able to capture some of the other images, and the other images were mostly captured while it was still daylight outside. In my view, if a place is haunted, it's haunted 24-7. This place definitely ranks as one of the most haunted locations that I've ever been to. The ruins at Roosevelt Island. 